Good morning, Ascension friends, and welcome to morning prayer. It is Wednesday, April 15th. Uh, my name is Robin Capcara. I am an Ascension parishioner, actually been a member of Ascension for almost 30 years. I work for InterVarsity Christian Fellowship doing faculty ministry at the universities in Oakland. And I'm joined today by my friend, John Paris. John, tell us a little bit about you. Hi, I'm John Paris. Um, I'm a member of Church of the Ascension. My wife and I have been going to Ascension since about August of last year. Um, my day job is a software engineer, and I'm happy to be here this morning for morning prayer. Very good. Well, as we uh, get ready to dive into morning prayer, let's just spend a few moments of silence, getting our hearts ready, and then I will lead us. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws, we have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your holy promises, declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and grace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Join me now in the invitiatory. I will do the regular type and you can do the bolded type. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. And now, please join me, we'll do this in unison, the Pascha Nostrum. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for today is the first 22 verses of Psalm 107, and we're going to do this by half verse, breaking at the asterisk. I will do the regular typeface, and you can reply with the bolded typeface. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious. And his mercy endures forever. Let those whom the Lord has redeemed give thanks whom he has delivered from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They went astray in the wilderness, even in the desert and found no city to dwell in. They were hungry and thirsty 
and their soul fainted within them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He led them forth by a straight path. Until they came to a city where they might dwell. Oh, that they would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness. And declare the wonders that he has done for the children of men. For he satisfies the empty soul. And fills the hungry soul with goodness. Some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. Being bound fast in misery and iron. Because they rebelled against the words of the Lord. And lightly regarded the counsel of the Most High. He also brought down their heart with heaviness. They fell down and there was none to help them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them out of their distress. For he brought them out of darkness and out of the shadow of death. And broke their bonds asunder. Oh, that they would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness. And declare the wonders that he does for the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass. And shattered the bars of iron asunder. The foolish were plagued for their offense. Because of their wickedness. Their soul abhorred all manner of food. And they were even close to death's door. So when they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, he delivered them out of their distress. He sent his word and healed them. They were saved from destruction. Oh, that they would therefore praise the Lord for his goodness. And declare the wonders that he does for the children of men that they would offer unto him the sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his works with good gladness. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson for today is from Job chapter 13. Beginning, yeah, got it. Behold, my eye has seen all this, my ear has heard and understood it. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you, but I would speak to the Almighty, and I desire to argue my case with God. As for you, you whitewash with lies. Worthless physicians are you all. Oh, that you would keep silent, and it would be your wisdom. Hear now my argument and listen to the pleading of my lips. Will you speak falsely for God? and speak deceitfully for him? Will you show partiality toward him? Will you plead the case for God? Will it be well with you when he searches you out? Or can you deceive him as one deceives a man? Surely, he will surely rebuke you if in secret you show partiality. Will not his majesty terrify you and the dread of him fall upon you? Your maximum, maxims are proverbs of ashes. Your defenses are defenses of clay. Let me have silence and I will speak and let me come on and let come on me what may. Why should I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, I will hope in him. Yet I will argue my ways to his face. This will be my salvation that the godless shall not come before him. Keep listening to my words and let my declaration be in your ears. Behold, I have prepared my case. I know that I shall be in the right. Who is there who will contend with me? For then I would be silent and die. Only grant me two things. Then I will not hide myself from your face. Withdraw your hand far from me, and let not dread of you terrify me. Then call, and I will answer. Or let me speak, and you will reply to me. How many are my iniquities and my sins? Make me, know, make me know my transgression and my sin. Why do you hide your face and count me as your enemy? Will you frighten a driven leaf and pursue dry chaff? For you write bitter things against me and make me inherit, inherit the iniquities of my youth. You put my feet in the stocks and watch all my paths. You set a limit for the soles of my feet. Man wastes away like a rotten thing, like a garment that is moth-eaten. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Please join me in the canticle Surge Illuminare, and we'll do this one in unison. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples, and over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or dest destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night, you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Epistle to the Hebrews, beginning with the fourth chapter, the 14th verse. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is in every respect, one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. For every high priest chosen from among the people is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he, as he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I've been thinking about these scripture passages that are a part of our morning prayer this morning. Um, and I find them interesting choices. I know that they're just lectionary choices. It's not like somebody decided to put these together for today. But I always find that in the lectionary, the, the lessons that do come up tend to be very appropriate to the day. So I've been thinking about them in light of the fact that we're going through this pandemic and whenever people go through something difficult that's painful and has struggle attached to it, um, a question always rises in, in our minds, why? Why is God letting this happen? Um, why are some people in a situation like this pandemic suffering more than others? Why do some get sick and some don't? Why do some who get sick die and others recover? Why do some suffer more financially? Why do suf some suffer more in their families? And how long will this go on? And what is God's intention in all of this? There are questions that all human beings always ask when going through difficult times or suffering of any kind. In our psalm, we read about all sorts of hardships and suffering that the people of Israel went through. Some of the things that they went through in the psalm 
were a result of their own sin. They brought certain things on their own heads. Other things in the Psalms seem to indicate that some of the suffering was just things that happen in a fallen world, not necessarily because of any sin that they committed. In the passage from Job, Job's actually frustrated with his friends who keep asking him what he did wrong to make God send these horrible things to him. And he didn't do anything wrong. Horrible things just happened to him because God was doing something else which Job couldn't see and didn't understand. So we don't always know why. In fact, I would say most of the time we don't know why certain very difficult things happen to us. And yet in each of the passages today, we see that God is in it, whatever it is, whatever the suffering is, God is there, God is leading his people, he is bringing them closer to himself, and he does have some purpose, whatever that purpose might be. We might not know till after it's all said and done, what the purpose was. But for the Christian, suffering and difficulty is never pointless. It's never random, pointless suffering. Because God always does something with it for his glory and for our good. He uses it somehow to sharpen us and shape us and grow us up. Sometimes he uses it to heal us in some way. Even in our passage here in, in Hebrews, we see that Jesus obviously sinless, suffered too. And he experienced the same weaknesses that we experience as human beings. He too was tempted. He too went through undeserved suffering. And so he can empathize with us because he knows what that's like. But the passage also says that he learned obedience by what he suffered. There was even something for Jesus to learn in that. And so maybe there's something for us to learn too in this pandemic. I'm not sure what it is, but I've been asking God, is there some way that you want to use this time to shape me, to grow me up, to change me in some way? Is there something you want to do in your people corporately, in the whole church? Show us what that is, Jesus, and help us to live into it. Would you join me, if you would, in confessing our faith together using the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and peace. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O oh Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of the bread, 
open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in the fullness of his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh, most mighty and merciful God, in this time of grievous sickness, we flee to you for comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use of for their cure. And grant that, perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts unto that heavenly wisdom, which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite your prayers at home. We'll just take a few seconds for you to pray, um, and I'll pray silently, and then I'll ask you to join me in the prayer of St. John Chrysostom. Please pray with me. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And let's do the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Bye, friends. <laughs>